on this episode of autocross and track we are testing out falcon's new 660 tire in a 315. so these have been out in the 245 smaller sizes like up to 255 i think and now we're going to see how they handle on the big boy and girl sizes on 315. should be fun aonde você vai well that's not where we're going it was supposed to go in the back of the truck, sweetie. Very different feeling tire. Wow. Definitely more grip. Okay, so this video is going to be a little bit different than my recent videos. I am going to have some footage recorded here in the garage since I've now had a chance to collect my thoughts on these uh, RT660s by Falcon in the bigger sizes. I'm also mixing in on-track footage and my initial impressions at the track so you can kind of get a feel for both. All right, we are about to head out for our very first laps ever on the larger size Falcon. 660. I mean, my first laps ever, but the larger sizes are just now coming out. All right, third lap, final lap. We'll see if these tires are overheated. They got pretty darn hot on the second lap. I think we saw temperatures of 150 or 160. Whew. But I got to clean up the entry to the first Chicago box top of the hill if I really want to get a better time. Should have been clean in the back section at least 41 3 all right all right first impressions i just did three laps back to back on the new falcon rt 660 this is in the 315 30 18 size i run that same size all four corners of the camaro uh yeah i can totally tell the difference between this and the 615 i'm sure that surprises nobody but what stood out to me is two things mid corner peak grip was much higher i was throwing the car much harder as the laps went on and we've got a few sweepers out here into these corners and it was sticking through the middle of that corner uh really impressed with how well the car stuck mid corner throwing entering that fast and throwing that much speed at it so uh mid corner grip is very good um i thought the old 615s actually had pretty good steering response but it is definitely more crisp on inputs when you're trying to flick the wheel quick for like a slalom or we don't actually have a slalom here but we've got a weird like back-to-back -back chicago box thing followed by a very slow left-hander so getting through that and flicking through um you know the car feels a lot more precise than before this is a 1968 camaro it's a camt build uh also competes in optimal ultimate streetcar the footage from this weekend is at the NMCA West Autocross, which gets a lot of classic muscle cars. You know, I have won uh, SCCA Nationals in the KMT class back in 2018 on the Falcon 615s. I ran those tires for about five years, got a lot of experience on them. You're going to see my initial impressions uh, from the track video footage that I love the turn in crispness. I love the mid corner grip. Uh, those were standout items. Um, a big question is going to be, how do they like the heat? Well, as you'll see in the footage, it was over 100 degrees Saturday. It was mid-high 90s Sunday. The way NMCA runs is you get three sessions. Each session, you do three laps, and there's only about anywhere from seven to ten cars 
in a run group in a session. So you don't have enough time to get out of your car and check tire pressures and spray tires unless you're willing to like lose a position or two in line. That's how fast the grid moves. So the car never gets turned off in between runs. The car is running between runs. I, I did get out and check tire pressures after the first and second run. Uh, also, after the second run, I got out and did spray the tires down. I was still able to set my fastest lap on my third laps. Uh, that held true both Saturday and Sunday. But I also noticed on Saturday is the car in the mid heat of the afternoon, where it was well over 100, was less forgiving if you spun the rear tires. So not that so much that I had lost rear grip as much as it was that if I made a driver error and induced too much oversteer or, you know, just got heavy ham fisted with the uh, throttle on and spun the tires up, they would overheat pretty, pretty quick. And that run was pretty much impossible to be faster. Now I would still set some pretty fast, respectable times, uh, times that were still good enough to beat the second place driver, but were you know, several tenths up to four or five tenths in some cases off of my best lap of the day. So I think these tires do put down power really well. Uh, for sure on lap one, they are amazing compared to um, the uh, 615 and some of the other brands uh, I've driven where they work. No longer is lap one a throwaway lap or a, uh, you know, got to get heat in the tires like if you've done a good job on your course walk, you can set a really fast time on your first lap. And for an event like NMCA, where you get two or three sessions at the course, you already know the course, you can go out on that first lap and lay, lay a blazing fast time down. Um, particularly helpful at NMCA, where season championship points and the overall weekend victor award goes to the person with the lowest combined average lap time. So every single lap counts and being able to run a quick first lap, which is a third of your typical laps in a weekend, that's an advantage. Uh, and I only know of one other tire that can kind of do that. Um, so definitely um, another standout item on these tires. A couple other things I wanted to talk about. You can see I got a Falcon 660 shirt on. I got a Falcon hat on. Full disclosure in this video, I do have a relationship with Falcon. Uh, I've been working with those guys for a few years now. And that's why I was lucky enough to get one of the first sets to land in the States of the 315s. Um, stock is coming and being built out in the distributor uh, network. I think I'm trying to be as unbiased as I can in this video. But I also want to be transparent that I do have a relationship with those guys. I did measure the tire stack um, before and after, and I'm running 18 by 11s on all four corners of the car. I realistically think that you could probably benefit from an 11 and a half or 12 inch wheel. Uh, un unmounted, the tire stack was almost 53 inches. And when I mounted them onto my wheels, that shrank down to 50 inches. Still mounted on 11 inch wheels was a little over half inch wider than the old 615s, um, all four stacked together. All right, third, and I'm pretty sure that was final session. So I got nine laps on the new Falcon 660 today. Uh, great tire, clearly better than the 615 for autocross. Um, beat some people I haven't beat in a long time. So that was cool. So that might be a wrap for today. Uh, we've got another day tomorrow and do another nine or ten laps on these tires and keep putting them through their paces and uh, yeah it's fun to mr chad Riker, who ran a 41.3 yes yes so i'm guessing the 660s a anything to say about the 660s great tire about to head out on the first runs for uh day two here sunday at uh, nmca west autocross just called my uh group to grid so I gotta run, let's see how these tires do. Okay, third run of the morning session. About to go down. No idea where the standings are. If my last run was clean, I think I snaked Tom on a second run, but I didn't see his third.
39.9. Man, you take those things tight. Huh? These things sticking. Dude, I'm things telling you, that lateral tight. grip is where these tires are just shining. Yeah, it's amazing. I think I need to trust the car a little more. It took it took a little for me to get used to it. I mean, I was creeping up on that yesterday, and I finally started letting it hang out on the first left-hand sweeper, and that's where I went, oh, yeah, these tires are good. All right, there's one other thing I forgot to mention, and that's kind of just overall what happened at the race weekend. How did these compare to some of my other competitors? So long story short, I won Saturday. I won Sunday. I was the fastest muscle car on site. So out of 36 classic muscle cars and around 30 modern muscle cars, this was the fastest. Uh, third fastest overall, just based on raw times. Uh, more importantly to me though, is my friend switched tires last fall and we went from being competitive, I win some events, he wins some events, to him just kicking my butt. And most of the events we've run since last fall and that includes NMCA events, SCCA events, and Optima events, he's been beating me by about a full second. And so by putting these tires on, my goal was, my hope was that when I came to this event, I would be competitive again. We'd be neck and neck. If I could close about that second gap, I would have been stoked and happy. Well, I beat him by six tenths Saturday. I beat him by eight tenths Sunday. So the tires wildly exceeded my expectations from a am I now more competitive standpoint? So yeah, they handle great. I've talked about the characteristics I like, but proof is in the pudding. You know, the results I got out of this tire compared to some of the guys I've been running against a long time and serve as pretty good benchmarks um, was just phenomenal. One other thing I want to do is show the wear of these tires. This is a front left driver's side tire, 315, 30, 18, 22 laps and to me they look in great shape still a little bit of opr on the uh trailing edge here of both of these you can see the leading edge of the center rib and this inside tread block is slightly rounded but i've seen that on other brands i don't think that's a big deal um you know the shoulder here looks good to me i don't see any signs that the rubber there is thin and there's a risk of cording or anything like that. So overall, wear looks good. I measured the tread depth with um, a tire tread gauge and most of the tire is still at 630 seconds after 22 um, laps. So I don't think there's really a risk of wearing these tires out. Um, we'll just have to see how they handle heat cycles. Give you guys a shot of the rear tires. As is expected, you see a little bit of rounding on the leading edge of the rear tire where the tread block that's subject to acceleration force gets worn a little bit. A little less rounding on the center rib there and the inside tread block. So, and then there's the outside, you know, no camber in the rear. So you always wonder, is the outside edge going to wear? Uh, looks good to me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it useful. I uh, really enjoyed getting a chance to uh, run these tires. I can't wait to uh, go to another autocross run them again. Uh, do me a favor, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell to get notifications when I post new uploads or content. If you guys have ideas on other stuff you wanna see that's related to muscle cars, autocross, track days, road course, racing, uh, please drop it in the comments below. Otherwise, um, I think that's a wrap. <laughs> that's Don't going on video. That. And, uh, <laughs> hey, I heard you guys are part of a fan club. We are the fan club. Oh, that's He's nice. He's on course right now. Fan club oh, yeah, we got, uh, Dane, Dane, <laughs> Very nice, guys. There. All right, it's a rough room when you have friends that you race with. And Dane Wilcox is one of the SCCA guys from San Diego. So he's tired. Hey Dan, what what do these guys got on their shirts? What does it say on their shirts? <laughs> oh look. Oh, oh, look at that. oh my god. Hey, my shirt's made. Man. I'll tell you it's a How's it feel to be the king? That's hilarious. These guys are awesome. Oh man. Oh. 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 He's like, I will make a t-shirt and we will get you. <laughs> you know, you got like nine people working on his foot food. Ah, uh, oh, 
I love these guys.